Welcome to Tripod, our travel retail themed podcast series in association with the SIVA Group. I'm Martin Moody. I'm Roger Jackson. Roger, um, I'm talking to you today from London rather than Hong Kong. I've been on a bit of a world trip, uh, an 85 day trip. I'm on a day, day, I think, 33 at the moment. I've been through a load of airports from Dubai to Doha to Riyadh to Zurich to um, Ho Chi Minh City uh, to, to, to London. And of course, I came out of Hong Kong International Airport, which was a bit of a, an exception to the rule otherwise that those airports have been exceptionally busy spending good and in some cases very good in them all. I'm feeling a, a great buzz uh, about the industry at the moment. The latest UN WTO numbers were exceptionally encouraging. Uh, what's your take on the state of the nation? I think it's very similar to yourself, Martin. You know, obviously we know uh, the situation with China and most of Southeast Asia is still, um, you know, slow to come back. But yeah, yeah. putting that to one side, I think you know we are getting to the place where not only are passenger numbers, you know, very encouraging, and in some instances getting very close to 2019 levels. Then if you look at our industry, you know, the majority of the retailers, especially in the Middle East and now starting in Europe. They're starting to, you know, some of them are actually back to sort of pre-pandemic uh, levels and we're not anywhere still near full passenger numbers. You know, someone like Emirates is, you know, 65% of passenger numbers versus 2019. So very encouraging for our industry. We've still got some challenges, which is what we discussed last week around availability of products. And that's across all categories. And I think that's, uh, and, you know, if you look at what recently has happened in the UK, availability of staff for airlines, for customs officials, for airports. So I think we've got some um, speed bumps in the way, but we definitely, the trajectory is very, very positive. And I think we've got to come together now as an industry, uh, brand owners, distributors, retailers, airport operators, you know, ancillary services, and we've got to come together because we owe it to this industry to get uh, our industry back up and running and it's very, very positive in my view, and I think it's going to continue. If anyone sat there and they're planning for second or third or fourth waves, you know, look, we, we haven't got a crystal ball. Of course, that's a possibility, but I think the, you know, the, the general consensus is we're through this and it's about looking forward now. Yeah, icing on the cake, as it were, with the, with the return of the Chinese sometime in um, in 2023. Now, now, well summed up, Roger, I came through uh, Heathrow, uh, a couple of days ago into arrivals. It was a complete mess, not the fault of the uh, airport company, of course, the fault of the government. Uh, you know, they had the temerity to to blame the travel trade here for not being sufficiently prepared for the recovery. Um, but look at when the government's in charge of the border force, it was a catastrophe. So not not so there are those challenges, um, supply chain as well, as you say, but things are getting better and better. One of the places that's certainly on the up and up to an extraordinary degree is Riyadh in Saudi Arabia. It yeah. spends a way up on 2019. And that, Roger, is the perfect segue, I suppose, to our guest for today. Shall we bring in a very special woman? Yeah, let's do it. So Tripod's special guest this week is Jacqueline Davies. Jackie, Business Development and Commercial Director for Lagadere Travel Retail Middle East, based out of Dubai. Now, like me, Jackie is a Kiwi, but also like me, and unlike the national bird and symbol of our nation, she is not a flightless one. In fact, Jackie's had a remarkable career in the travel retail sector that's taken her all around the world. One that's embraced some of the biggest retailer names in the business, DFS, JR Duty Free, and Arienta International down in Auckland, New Zealand, and of course, Lagadere Travel Retail now out of the Middle East. Now, I last saw Jackie a few weeks ago in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia, a country she leads for Lagadere, and about which she has very positive views, both in terms of the market and the country as a whole. Now, a stellar career then, and that's one that's still got a long, long way to run. But Jackie's had also had to deal with personal tragedy and all that follows in its wake. I consider her one of the most remarkable women I have met, someone who makes me extra proud to be a Kiwi. Jackie, welcome to Tripod. Wow, thank you, Martin. Lovely words. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And hello to Roger. Hey, Jackie. 
Well, Jackie, let's take you back to our our native land down under the land of the long white cloud. Growing up as a fellow Kiwi, um, where was it firstly, uh, Jackie, and what was like life like growing up down under? Um, down under. Well, I was born on a farm, and I lived there till I was eight. Till my parents split up, and then we moved to the city, and lived beside my grand grandparents. I had a beautiful childhood, um, absolutely uh, had had the most wonderful grandparents. Um, my grandfather was an entrepreneur and uh, I like to think that he taught me an awful lot. Um, at six o'clock every night, I used to run down to his house and lie on the couch and watch the news with him every single night. Um, I have wonderful um, memories of my childhood. And um, of course, I had a very, very strong mother who worked from the time that she left my father. So I guess it's inbred that um, that we are just strong working women. And so I once had a, had someone ask me about my glass ceiling, and I said I didn't know that there was one. There is no limits to what what we can do as women. Yeah, and a Kiwi woman to boot. So that's a that's a pretty strong combination in my view. Yes. Yeah. So, so Auckland um, is my hometown. Uh, I met my husband in Fitianga, uh, and that's where my heart is, is in Fitianga. Um, most beautiful place on earth, really is. Yeah, well, Jackie comes from the North Island and I come from the South Island, Roger, and we have a bit of rivalry about 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 that. We think we come from the most beautiful part in the world, but I know precisely where Jackie's talking about, and it is it is really nice. Just to close on the New Zealand bit um, before Roger leads on to your career, Jackie. Um, educated uh, where in, in 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 Auckland? I was. I went to James Cook High School, which uh, by all accounts now is one of the lowest decile schools in New Zealand. Um, I left school when I was 16 and became a hairdresser. <laughs> uh, and then went back to university when I was 40. Um, I had four children and went to university and had a full-time job. I honestly, looking back, I don't know how I did it, um, but one of the most remarkable experiences in my life was to be an adult student at uni. Loved it. Thoroughly recommend it. Wow, fantastic story. Well, I haven't had to go to a hairdresser since I was 16, but on, on, that, <laughs> on that note, I'll pass over to you, Roger. I've got a little bit more hair, but not not an awful lot, Jackie. So I think I, I might be coming to you for a quick uh, haircut now. And now I know that news. Um, Jackie, let me take you back. So you started your career with DFS. Tell yeah. me, take me back to how you got into duty free. Um, you've obviously um, worked for four of the largest retailers that are in trouble retail. Uh, if we can get you a, a job at Duty Free or Heinemann, at least we can get you the full collection. Um, <laughs> Because you've been, you, you've worked in them all, but tell me back how you got into duty free and how did that even happen before this amazing career you know started? Well, I was at university and as I said, had four children and I was working full time uh, doing some contract work. And my cousin actually worked for DFS and she was uh, she actually worked for Peter Allard. She reported to Peter Allard um, and she said to me one day we're looking for a souvenir or a destinations buyer. Would you be interested? And I said, yeah, I actually would. So I was two years into my degree and I interviewed with Peter and he was incredibly harsh, uh, but good. And he made me do a SWOT analysis. And I went <laughs> to the store and did this big SWOT analysis, went back and talked his ear off for about two hours. Uh, and he gave me a job, and um, I really never looked back. Uh, I had a wonderful time with DFS. I loved every minute of it. Um, it was six years of learning, and the learning curve was steep. I had such wonderful mentors like Michael Schreiber, Linda Olario, and I worked for a special man called Jeff Louie, who um, he was very nurturing and and hard as well. So, yeah, it was it was a fantastic time with DFS and, and um, best school in the world. And then uh, JR Ariane Lagarde, can you give me a brief <laughs> overview of that journey? 
Um, well, I'd resigned from DFS and didn't really know what I was going to do. Um, and at the time, Roger Vinavista called me and I got on a, yeah, I, I had a great call with Roger. I went and met him and I joined JR Duty Free. And eventually um, I ended up working with Steve Timms as well. And yeah. Steve, I had reported to Steve at DFS too. Huh. So um, that was that was really nice to work with Steve and especially Evelyn. Evelyn is a wonderful uh, woman as well, very strong and um, very privileged to have worked for JR Duty Free. I love that that experience as well. Yeah, um, yeah. Shout out to Evelyn and Gary. Yes, yes, lovely, lovely, lovely people. Yeah, I'm very privileged in the fact that. Um, I don't, I've, I've never burnt bridges, so I still have strong ties to all of these um, wonderful uh, people who have influenced my life as well. And then, of course, um, then came Arianta. So I interviewed with, um, I actually wanted to move back to New Zealand. I was living in Melbourne at the time, and I'm sorry to say I didn't love Melbourne. Um, I can see you laughing, Martin. Uh, I didn't love I didn't love uh, Melbourne, so I really wanted to move back to New Zealand and my family. Um, I interviewed with Jerry Crawford, um, had some really interesting conversations with Jerry, um, funniest man in the world as well. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, ended up joining Arianta as the um, uh, what was I uh, commercial commercial director kind of position. Uh, I worked with Phil Eccles and Tom Byrne and um, and just loved that experience as well. Uh, the Irish taught me a lot and, um, and also uh, had wonderful social occasions with the Irish. They were a lot of fun. Um, and then, of course, I, uh, as, as you guys know, my husband died. And I, I just felt like I was losing the plot, really. And I, I actually resigned and, and didn't, didn't have a clue what I was going to do. So I got, bought a one-way ticket to Europe. I went on a cruise around Croatia. I got on a bus and went through Croatia. Um, then I went to Spain and I did the Camino Trail. Uh, and the Camino Trail was really a turning point for me because I got my confidence back. Um, and finally, I went back to New Zealand. And um, a wonderful young man by the name of David Bissett, who I had met while I worked at DFS, he called me and he said, um, Jackie D, I've just been made CEO for Saudi Arabia. Do you want to come and be my commercial director? And just like that, I said, yes. I knew it was the right thing. <laughs> Call me crazy. Well, let's just dwell on that for in a minute. That, from the outside, would be a very unlikely decision. People have preconceptions uh, about Saudi Arabia, and certainly one of those preconceptions, uh, based on some reality, of course, historically, was it'd be very difficult for a woman uh, to go in there in a leadership role such as this. But that didn't daunt you, Jackie? Um, not at all. Um, as I said, I, I don't really understand glass ceilings. Uh, and I've always believed that I could do anything that my brothers could. So, um, uh, yeah, I picked, I picked two bags and moved to Saudi Arabia. Okay. And never looked back. I, um, I landed in Saudi. I looked out the window of the taxi and I just thought, my God, this is just incredible. I love this place. And I had love eyes for it from the first time in that taxi. Um, yeah. And, and you and I sat down, we had breakfast a few weeks ago and we had a really uh, enjoyable conversation. And you were telling me that pretty much any preconception of the country that anyone has should be thrown in the bin that you find it a extraordinary place. And as a woman, nothing there is 
holding you back. In fact, I think you told me, Jackie, that as a woman, you thought you could make things happen <laughs> quicker and faster and better. Well, because I work for Lagardia and my name's Jackie, most of the people that, you know, I, I, I would set up meetings through email or WhatsApp, and then I would arrive and they would think that I'd be a French man and my, my name was Jacques. So um, it was an element of surprise. It was great. <laughs> and uh, I know a little bit of Arabic. Um, so I can lead with the Salaam Alaikum and the Kafa Hailik and Tamam, Mamtas. Um, and and then they're just, most, most people are just amazed that I can, that it just flows off my tongue now after five years. Um, and they say, you speak Arabic? And I say, shui shui. Uh, and I, and shui shui means very little. <laughs> it's very, very little. But uh, it's a great um, inroad for me. Um, I, I've been incredibly lucky and I'm so proud to have um, experienced um, my whole life in, in Saudi. I've, I've, I don't think I've ever felt so um, privileged and honoured and, um, and so proud to be a woman in that country. Because I was once asked, how could I go there and be a woman um, and everything that women stood for in that country? And that is not true at all. Women are revered. Um, men generally, um, they're brought up to respect, to very much respect women and, and whatever woman wants, um, men should um, try and assist that. Um, so meetings that I go to, they, they bend over backwards to make me feel welcome firstly yeah. and to ensure that they help me in any way that they can. Never felt more welcomed in my life. Yeah, and there is a remarkable pace of change also going on in the country, Jackie, is there not? It Across all levels of society, and it does manifest itself in um, things such as women driving now. Um, the Riyadh conference that I attended, uh, it was fronted largely by women. Women were on most of the panels. Um, you wouldn't, uh, any, any historic uh, preconception or misconception uh, simply to me was was kind of going out the window and that that seems to ring true with your experience. Yes, it's very much changed in the last five years since I've been living there. Um, I no longer have to wear an abaya. Uh, if I'm going to a government building or to a special meeting, I will always wear an abaya out of um, courtesy. Yeah. But it's not mandatory. Um, I don't wear it on the shop floor. Um, but I still, I still feel um, I, I want to cover. I want to um, still be a woman, but I still want to to show respect. Yeah. So I wouldn't wear a low plunging top or or have my arms out or my legs out, for instance. But I'm old fashioned, maybe. Uh, and then as far as driving, I never wanted to drive in Saudi anyway. I don't even want to drive in Dubai. Well, I think Jackie's views and Jackie's appearance on this show will, will change a few opinions as well. That's been really illuminating, Jackie. Uh, Roger, over over back to you just to maybe close out this section on... Uh... Yeah. Jackie, I think you've probably name-dropped uh, more <laughs> travel retail legends than probably any guest we've ever had before. So it's probably <laughs> going to be quite a difficult question for you. But I guess, who are your key influences or mentors, however you want to see it, or people of interest in your career? And not only on your career, and touch on a bit around family as now as well, you know, as in terms of what's really shaped your life as in terms of the, the mentor side, but also the family side as well. Um, well, yes, I have already named dropped quite a few people. I just need to add to that uh, my Nagadia influences such as Vincent Remey, um, Manif Muhammad, um, he's my boss now, um, who I love working for. He's a very, very smart man. 
uh, Doug, who actually did sign off on me coming to, well, moving to Saudi, because of course, um, who knew that a woman um, would be allowed to, and, and that all went all the way to Doug. Of course, Lillian, um, and mostly David, who David. Uh, me to, to move to Saudi uh, at the very, very beginning. He's no longer with Lagadia, but um, what a special, amazing, funny, special man he is. Um, and then as far as family, of course, it's my mum, my grandfather, uh, and then my children, and most especially my youngest son, who's at university now, who says to me, Mum, I want your job. <laughs> um, and I've loved, I've loved every single role. Okay. All right, Jackie, I want to close out this section by kind of pushing you a little bit on on your philosophy in life, your values. Your, your life has been shaped clearly by where you grew up, strong woman in a, in a great country, a long way away from anywhere. And I think that that creates its own kind of spirit. It's been shaped by family, but it's also been shaped as as we touched on earlier by by tragedy. You you lost your husband at a young age to a terrible disease. I know that disease very well. I celebrated, if that's the right word, yesterday, 12 years to the day since I was diagnosed with that same disease of cancer. And I'm one of the lucky ones. We've lost many, many along the way, including tragically, um, your husband. So tell us how all of that, the good, the tragic, the successful, has shaped Jackie Davis in terms of your philosophy on life. Um, I think my biggest philosophy on life is to live every day like it's your last. I never miss a, an opportunity to tell someone that they've done a good job or that I love them or, um, yeah, don't don't ever miss an opportunity to say what, what's in your heart. Um, and I also think that um, when Bradley died, I felt very judged and I didn't know how to bear that weight. Um, and I read something this morning that said, not everything that weighs you down is yours to carry. And I think that's a really big, sorry, <laughs> it's a really big, um, a big responsibility for all of us not to carry every single um, judgment that everyone has for us. Yeah, absolutely. And to, to move on and make sure that that you are living every single moment and um, embracing it. Well, you've done just that, Jackie, and you've done, done it in the in the most remarkable, remarkable way. And I think you know, chatting with you over breakfast a few weeks ago, I was inspired. I went out of that meeting. And I thought I got to change a few things. So mm -hmm. you're doing some good in uh, in how you're you're a, becoming a, a a great role model for 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 a lot of people. So and thank you for that, and thank you for the honesty of that. Well, we're going to change the tone a bit, and we're going to have a bit of fun now, aren't we, Roger? So over to you. And we'll yeah, just just so you know, Martin, I don't think I'm glad Jackie cried because I don't think I've ever had a meeting with Jackie where one of us hasn't cried. <laughs> so at least we've kept up that tradition. <laughs> um, Jackie, so after obviously upsetting you on the podcast so much, you now get something nice. So we're going to take you to our desert island. Uh, so you get a holiday, at least you get a holiday. And on this yeah. desert island, uh, we're going to let you bring a single duty free item. So you get to pick any item uh, of duty free um, and you can choose what it is. Well, you boys probably would have something quite different than what I would choose. Um, I'm all about the skincare. I love skincare. And I think for me, for me my life changed when I found a and Estee Lauder a and serum. And I could not go anywhere without a serum. Sorry. Oh, no. <laughs> that's the really thing, right? No, that's good. So we've got some serum. So along with that serum, you can take a piece of music or an album. What uh, what music will you have? Um, well, my uh, favourite song from when I was young uh, is Brown Eyed Girl, Van Morrison. Oh, uh, yes. Apparently, I used to have the biggest brownest eyes of any girl in school, so that's <laughs> always been my, my thing. And then um, about four years ago, 
my son sent me um, a, he, he quite often sends me music. And for Mother's Day, he sent me Hey Mama by Kanye West. So I do love that. And a bit of Jimmy Barnes as well. I'm old fashioned. Okay. <laughs> We'll let you have all three of those then. Yep. Thank you. Uh, and then to go along with uh, your items, you can now also take a book. Um, so what book would you have on the desert island? Oh, uh, Many Lives, Many Masters. Um, it's a book about reincarnation because I can't, I can't bear the thought that the end is the end because it's not. There's many, many, many beginnings. And Martin, I've got something to admit here. Jackie very kindly gave me that book about nine months ago, and I uh, I still haven't read it. So, uh, I, uh, Jackie, I promise you this year I'll read that book. Good boy. All right. All right. Well, look, you, you're far too social a person, Jackie, to leave you in isolation on the on the on the tripod desert island. So we're going to put together a special dinner party for you, and you're you're the hostess, and you can have three guests from history or living today, from any walk of life, who would they be and why? Um, well, I tried to think about this desert island and I kind of feel like I'm in a bit of a desert island when I live here in Dubai, of course, because all my family's away. So I started yeah. putting together the list thinking about who I miss the most. And then that was a major fail because it, it was more than three. Then I thought about Martin Luther King, Michelle Obama, um, and uh, and Defo, my best friend, Leanne. Um, so just, I, I guess, you know, people that, that um, have stood up for the smaller person uh, have been um, real role models and people that we can um, really look up to. All right. Jackie, we're going to close off now. You've been on the desert island for a while. We're going to take you somewhere else as your treat, anywhere in the world to go for your next trip. We'll fly you there in style. Where would it be and why? Uh, I'd actually planned to go to India um, to a yoga retreat in the Himalayas. Um, and I was supposed to go in the July uh, of 2020. And of course, we got COVID, uh, couldn't go, and I was supposed to go with my daughter. Uh, I really would like that trip to happen. Um, Caitlin's a very special young lady, and I'd love to spend a week just hanging, hanging out and uh, philosophizing with her. Yeah. yeah, great choice. A bit of a historical Kiwi link there, Jackie. We all know who the first man up Mount Everest was, and it was a good Kiwi boy, Sir Edmund yes. Hillary. Yes, yes. Yeah. So, Jackie, that's been terrific. It's been lovely to talk to you. I really enjoyed our chat, as I said, in Riyadh the other week. Um, this feels like an intimate chat, even though we're doing it via Microsoft Teams. It's just been uh, it's been warm and wonderful to chat with you. I think, as I said earlier on, you, you, you are an inspiration to me and to many, including Roger. Um, you've been through a, a lot and you are still that strong, redoubtable. Kiwi women that you grew up as and, and um, you've done so well in your career. Keep keep going well, stay safe, and we've really enjoyed being with you today. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, I've really enjoyed the time spent with you, for sure, Martin, and I really hope that um, that you keep rocking it. Don't, don't give in to that horrible disease at all, never. Positive thoughts. No chance, Jackie. No chance at all. Roger, final word to you. Uh, thanks, Jackie. Um, Martin, Jackie's a really close friend of mine and my wife's anyway, and uh, we've got the privilege of also working with her as well. So for me, it wasn't really a chore doing this podcast. It was just felt like normally having a nice chat. But Jackie, everything Martin said <laughs> with uh, caramel on top, you know, we love you and uh, what you do is absolutely amazing. So. Well, well said. Well, I forgive you for being from the top part of the North Island of, of New Zealand. Jackie, after this show, I'm going to watch my beloved Crusaders live on TV playing. They're not playing the, the, the Blues yet, but they'll probably be playing them next week in the final one. We both know that the Crusaders will come through strongly. 
Well, I believe that the Chiefs are going to win today anyway. But Jackie, that's that's you know that's heresy. On that, on that note, the Crusaders will 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 pummel them. I can assure you. Anyway, Jackie, take good care of yourself. Look after yourself, and thanks, thanks for God. being with us on the show. See you soon. Bye. Well, Roger, what an extraordinary guest. What a life story, shaped by really a, a an upbringing in a small country, a very strong family, lovely attitude towards life, a successful career, and then one that was tainted by personal tragedy. And you heard that in the emotion today. So it was a, a special conversation, I think, with a remarkable woman. Just sum that up for me briefly. Yeah, I think, you know, you, you used the word remarkable. Uh, for Jackie and that's absolutely the right word for Jackie it's used far too much and with Jackie it's not Um, she's an absolutely remarkable woman I think we're very lucky in travel retail to have a number of remarkable women Um, you know we spoke about Evelyn Danos uh, during the podcast with Jackie and uh, he absolutely sits up there and also the great news of Susan Whelan and her OBE this week so congratulations to Susan and Jackie absolutely sits up there, you know, mother of four, successful career, worked for four of the largest retailers in travel retail, gone to an area of the world that I would imagine 99.9% of women, let alone men, would would take up that challenge. Absolutely. And gone over there, not only been successful, thrived. Um, and now obviously she's moved to Dubai in the UAE to, you know, to head up the, you know, uh, Abu Dhabi as well as, you know, the Saudi Arabia operations. Uh, I'm very lucky to class her as a friend uh, and we're very lucky to have her in our industry. Absolutely. I I couldn't agree more. Really well summed up, Roger. Listen, stay safe, stay well. I'm really pleased to hear what you think about the business and because you're very, very close to it. You're supplying the, the business and you're seeing good things. And I think you summed it up perfectly. So onwards and upwards. We will see you uh, next time, Roger, but to all our viewers out there, see you next week. See you soon.